Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up this week's theme of one album bands, exploring bands that have only ever put out one album and then just stopped making music with, um, well, they're called Miracle Musical. And they have one album called Hawaii Part 2. Miracle Musical is also not written in English. I don't know what language these uh, symbols are for. But even more stranger is that they are from... They're neighbors to me. They're from Miami. And the album was released on 12 12 12 and the more I look at this album art, I thought it was beautiful. Uh, some sort of moon over the water and some palm trees. Uh, these ethereal stairs. But then I noticed on the right side, there's these monstrous teeth coming out of nowhere. and They're sort of alpha channeled and uh, blended in rather naturally and sort of invisible on top of the, the stars. And I just have no idea what to make of any of this. It's, it's, I guess we just got to dive into this. I, let's see where this rabbit hole takes us. Alone at the edge of a universe humming a tune. Oh, the song is called Dream Sweet in C major, but it's like S-E-A for C. I love music puns, so. A siren sounds like the goddess who promises endless apologies of paradise. And only she can make it right. I mean, it's kind so of... things are different to Beautiful. Together in flight. What is this? The production is all over the place. It's now and never or every and ever. Like the vocals are muffled it's just enough that it sounds like an old timey recording, but everything else has a clarity to it that screams modern. I'd even say the composition itself airs on modern day composition with me, darling, one foot held into the past. Falling, like melting obelisks as tall as another. There's something wonderfully nostalgic about the notes themselves. Random French? Oh, even we we even went back to English. What in the world? A cosmic confluence of pyramids, You know what's interesting is um, a lot of the 
musical elements in the background, the instruments, instrumental lines, kind of remind me of uh, the soundtracks to Steven Universe. They all sort of have that uh, nostalgic brightness to them. Nice little waltz here. Sounds like the end of a play. The send off. There's a lot of finality in here. Especially with that resolution. digitization of a rather natural sounding voice. This, it's got to be ending soon. We're getting close to. Oh. I knew it was exactly seven minutes long, and we're at 8:40. Well, we were at about 8:45 when I started that that sentence, and I was like, you know, I don't remember when we started in particular. I knew I went on a bit longer than usual, had a little bit of an intro spiel to the band itself, or the album itself, I should say. But I knew we were wrapping up, and it sounded like we were building. How do you go... I didn't know how much time we had left, but I knew it was almost over. And you just can't go from the building to an ending naturally, and of course they didn't. I mean, how would you? You're building up intensity and volume and width, and you need... I mean, the end of a song is... Nothing. <laughs> I mean, I suppose this could go into the next track, but it also sounds like it stops. Oh no, this is the 11th track on an 11 track album. That's how the album ends. <laughs> um...
I'm going to be honest. To say I'm a bit lost here. Might be an understatement. And that's not to say that I don't understand elements of the track. The melodies, the harmonies, the chord progressions, uh, the percussive rhythmic elements, all of that makes sense to me on the surface level. The melodies are catchy and positive. They're just very, very nice to listen to. The, the vocalist has a nice voice. Uh, and there's something very nostalgic and warm about the melodies chosen. And of course, some of that warmth comes from the chords that the melodies are played over. Once again, they just have this uh, strong nostalgic element to them. I had mentioned that they reminded me of similar compositions that show up on the Steven Universe soundtrack. And it's it's definitely pointing to an older era of pop music. And I don't know what specific era it is. But at least to me, there's a strong sense of nostalgia and warmth to that. Um, and, you know, we started off with almost a barbershop style idea, uh, completely a cappella, and uh, heavy harmonization between four male vocals. We didn't stick around with that for too long, and we didn't really hear much of the vocal harmonies until the end when we had a second male vocalist and a female vocalist come in to help support our lead vocalist, but that was also short-lived. The majority of this track is a single vocalist over electronic sounds. The percussion is rather simple through a lot of this as pop and electronic uh, music tends to be very rigid and more of crafting the heartbeat of the song than providing a rhythmic groove or doing any so any sort of melodic uh, rhythmic ideas. What I find really interesting is more so not the music itself, but what happens around the music. There are several instances throughout this track where we have sounds, not musical sounds, not instruments, but waves or just... Uh, well, oh, okay. We have water waves throughout here in several places, including what I thought was the ending. And what is this? Where, where uh, was this this week or last week? I think it was last week. I don't, I don't remember what song it was, though. Might have been this. Anyways, uh, we had a track recently that I felt ended and then they just decided to keep going. Oh, it might have been Nova Collective, which was from this week. Um, but yeah, the song feels like it reaches an ending point and then just keeps going. And that's what happened here. I had mentioned there's a lot of finality uh, where we were. The chords were pointing towards pure resolution. They were pointing towards an ending. We were experiencing a retardando, a slowing down of the tempo to achieve this final dramatic moment. And the song seriously could have ended right there. And instead, we get a moment of silence with waves crashing against the shore. And then that dum 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 repeating sound that gets layered with harmonies. Um... I don't understand why this week of all weeks, it's such a rare thing to get a fake out ending and we got two in the same week. What are the chances? I don't understand it. I really don't. That that ending was just so well crafted and they interrupted it for some reason. I'm going to assume it makes sense to them. Uh, you know, I always come at this analysis with the benefit of the doubt that everything that is presented to me is at least on some level intentional and purposeful. That it all means something to the band. That might not always be the case, but it's better to start from there. And if necessary, work to a place where it was, where it was an accident or unintentional. 
if uh, if I can get there. Um, otherwise, I'm just being real cynical about a lot of music. Um, but it doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe when I hit the lyrics, it'll make sense. Anyways, I think we got to that because we were talking about the waves crashing and they were there at the end. We have waves crashing uh, throughout this track. But those aren't the only atmospheric waves that are here. There's also some sort of synth wave. I don't know what they were because they were heavily modified. But it was just like this sound that starts on to the left and just like ping pongs from left to right while fading uh, across those. Um, and just, we had all sorts of these ideas of just these random, well, at least to me, seemingly random environmental sounds, some of them uh, possibly real field recorded stuff, much like the, the ocean waves, but some of it digital. And its job is entirely to craft atmosphere, to put the listener in a specific place or maybe emotional field more so than do something musical. And so we have music that is nostalgic and calm and beautiful in a lot of ways, surrounded by just sound at times. And I just, I have no idea what to really make of it. The song took me on a journey that I wish I could say I got you know some songs have put me on a visual journey and I'm imagining things as I'm listening to it or I'm feeling emotions and this is just kind of a lot of interesting ideas back to back but I don't know what they're all supposed to mean I think the last thing I want to touch on before we hit the lyrics because I, I just I don't have a strong read on this it's just the pure instrument instrumentization the orchestration of this track all, all the instruments in it I really loved it primarily because we had a plucked violin through a lot of it which I thought was really cool we don't hear that too often aside from this style of music which I feel like is sort of stereotypical for this vibe but it also just it works which is probably why it became a trope which is why people keep using it i mean that's how tropes go they're effective that's that's why they become tropes but we have that we have uh bowed strings we have this beautiful bass walking these bass lines under everything uh we have all the vocal work on here um and then we have some of the uh the digital sounds i think there is a synthesizer playing notes not just sounds throughout here as well um and so we have something that i think we see a lot of instruments we typically see but in new contexts and i think a lot of that just comes from the era of music they're attempting to emulate and i say attempting they actually emulate it very well and oh that's actually something i should probably talk about as well um, so is there any instruments I missed? Probably. Those are the ones, that, especially the plucked violin. I can't think of what that, there's a specific term. If you're a violinist on your sheet music, it'll have this term, and I can't remember what it's called. But it tells you you need to pluck. We have, there's, a, there's a special music term for plucking the violin. Um, but it's just, we hear it so rarely on the channel, and it is a gorgeous tone. It really is. The violin is just a gorgeous instrument in, in all ways, but I think that is probably, it's just the brightest way you can get a sound out of the violin, and it just sounds so good. Um, the production, though, we really have to talk about this, because at the beginning, we have a ton of fuzz and, and distortion on the vocals, all of the vocals. Like I mentioned, we start off the track with like waves, and then this quartet of singers. And it's all heavily compressed. It sounds like it was recorded in, you know, the 40s or 50s. And then equally played through hardware of the 40s and 50s. Um, and it just has this old-timey vibe to it. And I kind of figured that's where we were going to stay 
or it was going to change when we brought in some other instruments. And it kind of did both. We ended up having that overly compressed uh, muffled vocals that stuck around for the whole song, but it also, the rest of the instruments came in and were modernly produced. Very clear, very clean. Um, and so there's this really big contrast, because we even had this compression on the female vocals uh, when they came in at the end. Um, and somewhere in the middle too, wasn't there? I think I... I didn't bring that up earlier, but I think we did have uh, harmonies in the middle. I don't remember. But yeah, they were just as compressed. So the vocals were produced as if they were old timey recorded and produced uh, and sorry, and played. But everything else feels very modern. So there's this anachronistic clash in the production going on here that never quite seems like it fits but at the same time, works. I think the more you listen to this, the less it becomes a problem by the end of the track. I didn't really have an issue with it, but it is very distracting at the beginning. And it's one of those things that I think if you want to get into this band, you have to get past. Um, but it's such an, an interesting, everything in this Everything about this is interesting. Why did they release on 12, 12, 12? Why is the album called Hawaii Part 2 when there's no Part 1? Why is the band Miracle Musical but not written in English despite being very much a U.S. band? Why is there gnashing teeth on the album art when everything else looks serene and calm? Why are they making 1950s modern day digital pop electronic pop like i there's so many questions i have for these people and i'm curious if a decade later they're still in miami because i would just go over there and i'd conduct an in-person interview i have so many questions about this um i i don't even know it's it's so bizarre and like here's the other weird thing too well aside from the outro itself which we had that fake out ending we also shifted to a waltz somewhere along uh the the song I was 60 percent in a few minutes into the track we shifted to a waltz and i really liked the waltz we moved to a three four idea with the bass instead of walking a bass line like it had previously in the four four was emphasizing beat one To me, waltz and water go together hand in hand, and I'm not the only one who feels that way. There are there's been a long list of water-based themes that are done in musical themes that are done in the waltz. There's a combination there that I think just absolutely works. The song is called Hawaii. The picture is of water. Could be a beach, I don't know, could be you know, the Atlantic coast in Miami. They could have just taken a picture of that and overlaid some pictures, which would make sense why the palm trees are there. Too. I think Miami's got palm trees. We have palm trees around here. We're not even by a coast. And then, of course, we have the waves crashing against the shore in the music, in the song itself. It makes sense to me to put a waltz in here, but the transition into it was weird, and where they went with it was odd. And then they, they tried to turn it into an ending, which I think worked magnificently. And then they abruptly destroyed that resolution they crafted, which just this dum 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 And just why would they... Like, I don't... I don't... There's so many questions. This feels so much like musical collage to me. That really is what it feels like. I don't know why they did why they didn't click earlier. Uh, for those who don't know, visual collage is when you create a picture uh, by cutting out, or actually you can create it, I suppose, but usually people would cut out 
uh, pictures from all sorts of sources, magazines, newspapers, uh, printouts from the internet or whatever. And so the artistic visual style, the visual language of it uh, shifts from moment to moment because you have these different uh, pictures from different sources, right? Um, and could even be completely different art styles if you're not just working specifically with photography. And so it becomes very, it's singular media where it's all just paper, but it's mixed visual language. And that's what this feels like. It's very mixed musical language. The production, the influences, the styles, it all feels mishmashed in a lot of different ways, much like our album art here, which is a mix of photography and uh, I don't know, looks, the stairs look very digital to me. They could have been crafted in uh, some sort of visual ma making. <laughs> I don't know what 3D modeling software is. <laughs> um, and then the gnashing teeth thing, I don't even know where that came from. And all of this is sort of uh, overlaid with a, an opacity sort of blending concept. It feels mixed media. It feels like a bunch of elements removed from their original source put on top of this picture of the nearby water they might have had. And the music ends up feeling, oh, you know what? That's not the moon. All right, so check this out. Uh, that should have been a really nice transition. But anyways, look at the teeth and their placement to the moon. Um... I wish I had a different setup here where I could make this larger. But anyways, um, above the teeth, you can kind of see a bend, uh, some extra body part, an extra appendage. The moon, I think, is actually, I mean, it is a moon. It has the, the darkened spots on it like the moon would, but the way that the teeth are positioned I'd wager it is a lantern fish. Is that what they're called? The ones that have the little appendage hanging down with the light and they exist like in the depths of water or whatever. And they do have teeth like that. So it's actually overlaid in a way that the moon is this fish's light, whatever that is. I don't know. I don't actually know how that fish works. I don't know how they conduct, uh, how they create that light. It's, Pretty fascinating what nature does sometimes. Um, and see, interestingly, is off on the left, in the middle left, at the horizon. I thought that was an island, but that's an animal, a dolphin or a shark or something. It's a, a fin popping out of the water. And that really makes me question what's happening in the upper left. I don't know what all that is. It's not, I don't know. I got a lot of questions for this, man. This was a strange listen, and it's only added, the, the oddness has only been added upon by looking at the album art and understanding uh, some more about the creation of the, uh, the album itself. I gotta go listen to this. <laughs> um, in the meantime, let's get into some lyrics here. Before we get into what I think these lyrics mean, we got to talk about the word smithery here. Is that a word? I'm making it up. It's not even just about the vocabulary, which is impressive at times. In fact, our first verse begins, It's now and never a reverie endeavor awaits some nobulent directives to take the helm. Believe me, darling, the stars were made for falling like melt, like melting obelisks as tall as another realm. It's just like the imagery of it, the flow of the words and syllables themselves, the raw vocabulary present in some of these lines. Um, it is just very indulgent in the best kinds of ways. I don't know who the lyricist is on this. Yeah, we have a written by three people. It's possibly all three people in the band, possibly. Um, and a producer, which is two of the people that wrote it. 
No, no lyricist though. Just gorgeous writing. Verse 2 says, It feels like flying, but maybe we're dying. A cosmic confluence of pyramids hologrammed. She knows you heard her staging music murder in line before the show began to be where I am. So yeah, just the, the raw lyricism on display here is phenomenal. And if the music hadn't had me captured already, if even just by sheer curiosity... I am completely smitten with the lyrics. But it seems to be about somebody, as our intro states, alone at the edge of a universe. A siren sounds like the goddess who promises endless apologies of paradise. And it's about this person who says, you know what? I know you're a siren, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept your call. And explores this evening of grandiose exploration with this siren before, I believe, dying. As sirens uh, are in, uh, in folktale, ones who bring sailors to their death. Um, and through this death, though escapes past the stars in the sky and experiencing that eternal nothingness. Interestingly, having uh, some positive things to say in our final verse says, Bye, we never meant to part. Sublime thy art, one light higher than the sun, invisible to some until it's come, uh, until it's time. Um, Kind of states that, you know, I, I've, you killed me, you know, but were we really ever supposed to part? And it almost speaks to some sort of, uh, you know, a, a cosmic relationship here between the sailor. I'm going to, I'm just going to call him a sailor because I was going to say the person on the boat. <laughs> uh, but we'll just call him a sailor for, uh, for time's sake. The sailor and this siren. And they were cosmically brought together and torn, he views it as torn apart too soon. We never meant to part. However, this is the job of the siren, which is to lead sailors to their death. Um, and it's interesting that his perspective on this is not that she killed him or that she helped in his death, but that it all happened too soon that they were still supposed to be together. That The siren wanted to be with him as well. He says, but no matter, I am now a light that's higher than the sun, invisible to some until it's time. Almost to say, as if to say, I'm a star in the sky and you can only see me at the night, which the night's idea, the idea of night and stars pops up a couple of times in the lyrics here. So I'm not sure if that means something on a larger scale, but yeah, I mean, that's the general vibe of this track, is the sailor heard the siren's call and said, yeah, let's go for it, and then died at the end. <laughs> and it just, like, does not match the music at all, so, again, it's just one more thing that just really puzzles me about this track, so I don't know. Those are my thoughts on Miracle Musical's Dream Suite in C Major. What did you think? Did you enjoy it? Was there anything in there that stood out to you that maybe I didn't talk about or didn't expand on? Let me know down in the comments. Above that, there's a description box. In there is a link to Linktree. It takes you to this menu right here. You can find my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, or ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, we have a special selection and a creator request today. Tomorrow, we'll have an album review. There will not be a live stream on Sunday, and I'll be back Monday for next week's theme, which I think is Bass Week. Yeah, we're going to be checking out some bass work. All right, so until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.